This was Scott Morrison's first major overseas trip since the pandemic began. How do you think that the Prime Minister fared? Well, Danica, great to be with you. Look, I think the Prime Minister did very well on this trip. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of little things which I thought were a bit strange. Not having a one-on-one -on -one with Joe Biden, if that was our initiative, I think that's a bit strange. Uh, and um, I think we should stop talking about the need for a full inquiry about the origins of COVID-19. It, uh, it's not going to happen. It doesn't get us anywhere. But these are very minor little, uh, you know, hesitations. I think overall it was a tremendously successful trip to get all of those G7 nations expressing solidarity with Australia in its difficulties with China was a tremendous thing. You know, we are not friendless. Uh, the very fact that uh, the Prime Minister was invited to the G7 is significant itself. Then also, Australian diplomacy was successful in avoiding any criticism from any of the uh, climate change jihadists at the G7 um, of Australia's position. So there was no criticism at all of Australia on that. Free trade agreement with Britain is good. It's not revolutionary, but it's good. It's a step forward. And the meeting with Emmanuel Macron was important because of the consequence of the submarine deal and the kind of quasi-strategic partnership which we're having with the French, as well as, of course, with the British. And then, finally, the, um, the Asia-Pacific dimension of the whole trip. I mean, the Japanese Prime Minister and the South Korean President, our Prime Minister had uh, bilateral meetings with them. He would certainly not have met the South Korean President in any other context. So, you know, take it all together. That's a very productive uh, week's work uh, by an Australian Prime Minister. Uh, you mentioned China and, and the Prime Minister won that support from most of the G7 leaders about Australia's stand against China. What do you think that this means now for the relationship between Australia and Beijing? Well, um, Daninka, I'd phrase it just slightly differently. I think they, they won... Uh, Australia won the strong backing from the G7 because of China's unreasonable actions against, China, against Australia. It's not so much that Australia is taking a stand against China. Australia has done the most elementary things to preserve its own national interests, such as uh, legislation which is foreign interference, um, you know, keeping Huawei out of the 5G network and so on. These are actions which a lot of other nations have taken as well. And uh, China has imposed shocking economic coercion against Australia. Now, uh, we're not going to return to normal with China anytime soon, but it is very, very important that through this passage, uh, China is unable to isolate Australia diplomatically. Uh, so, you know, we don't want ongoing uh, diplomatic spats with China, but if they're insisting on inflicting this kind of uh, punishment on Australia, it's very important that our friends and allies stand with us. There's not that much that our friends and allies can do in a practical sense. You know, they're not going to forbear from sending exports to China because uh, China has imposed tariffs on us. But the political statement was tremendously important. If anything, I think it makes it more likely that China will desist from its persecution of Australia because it's not having the desired effect, it's not bending Australia's will and it's not isolating us from our friends. Uh, just finally, Greg Sheridan, right now, of course, there's no concrete plan on when Australia's border will reopen. Uh, there's no vaccine timeline. The Prime Minister's chosen to travel while the rest of us cannot. Do you think it, it sends the wrong message? No, not a bit. No, no, I think that's, uh, that's absolutely wrong. Uh, the Prime Minister didn't go on a holiday. He flew 24 hours to work six and a half days, 24 hours a day, to prosecute critically important Australian national interests. And then he flew 24 hours back and, um, and went straight back to work. Now, it's always been the case that on official, you know, uh, critical official business, uh, senior Australians can travel. And then, incidentally, he'll, he'll quarantine for two weeks in, in the lodge. Um, now, I think the travel restrictions are very sensible. The fact is this virus is very cunning and adaptive and this new Delta strain is desperately uh, dangerous. You know, Britain is having 
a new surge of infections, even though more than 70% of its population is vaccinated. The Delta strain is perhaps twice as infective as the original Wuhan strain was. It attacks younger people. It attacks children. It gives you a more severe illness. I mean, uh, we will eventually have to reopen the, the border in mm. some measure. We're not there yet. Mm. Even when 70% of us are vaccinated, it's very unclear uh, how we will reopen. And believe me, the overwhelming bulk of the Australian people would prefer not to be dead uh, as opposed to enduring a few, um, a few mm. restrictions uh, here in the